We're talking with Dr. Tony Ramos, board certified internal medicine specialist, and we're talking about health problems in men. Tony, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Well, thank you for having me on. Are there, are there major health issues that men have? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. think heart disease is a major issue. Well, let's talk about heart disease. Uh, first of all, uh, it's the leading cause of death, of in, death. Yes, of men. Man. Uh, what about cholesterol? Is that part of heart disease? Absolutely. It's probably the major risk factor for heart disease. And when somebody has an elevated cholesterol, uh, how do you break it down? What do you tell them to do? Well, usually what we do is we'll do a screening cholesterol test, and then we tell the patients their results, and we try to tell them why it's important that their cholesterol be controlled. Uh, what you're looking for is usually a cholesterol less than 200, uh -huh. and that's your total cholesterol. You want your LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, to be under 130. If under you have, 130. If you okay. have no significant risk factors. Now, once you start putting risk factors in there, like heart disease, diabetes, smoking, family history, then that usually cuts it down to 100. So if you've got risk factors, it makes it more complicated, Absolutely. doesn't it, to figure out what you want somebody's LDL, the bad cholesterol, to be. How about the good cholesterol? Well, the good cholesterol is very important, too. Uh, the HDL uh, is uh, a positive marker instead of a negative marker for heart disease, and you want that to be at least 35 to 40, and the higher the better. Now, if somebody has a bad cholesterol, they have too much bad cholesterol, their cholesterol is too high, or their LDL is bad, are there good medications? Absolutely, there's wonderful medications. Yeah, they um, do. You know, what are they? There's a group of medications called the statins, and they are the premier medications for cholesterol. Uh, contrary to popular belief, they are very safe, uh, as long as you monitor your liver, and the incidence of liver inflammation with them are extremely low. Uh, and uh, they usually have very little side effects, and they're very well tolerated. Uh, yeah. And I always tell my patients that the risk factor of having a negative outcome with it is minuscule compared to the positive outcome. So it's good to be on statins. In fact, some people said maybe we ought to add it to the water. I think so. Um, if somebody comes to you and says, oh, I'm having chest pain, it's crushing right in the middle of my chest, uh, it comes on when I exercise, does that make you worry? Oh, absolutely, and absolutely. What, yes, so uh, what test do you do if somebody's having chest pain? Well, if you're having chest pain and, and you're also looking for uh, how does it happen, and people say I have chest pain when I'm laying down and I'm watching TV, and you know, likely it's not gonna be heart disease, but exercise, exertional activity, so forth, then you have to worry about heart disease, absolutely. Is there a classic pain that they have? Well, you know, yes there is, but as you know in medicine, there's. Classic is never really the, the way it presents, but the chest pain radiating to the shoulder, the neck. So if you get an electrocardiogram on me, does that tell you if I'm having heart problems? It can be a good marker to look at, but you can have a completely normal EKG and still have heart disease. So uh, if my electrocardiogram is normal and I'm still having this pressured chest pain that comes on with exercise, what's the next test? Uh, a stress test. A stress yeah. test. And what is a stress test? What goes on with that? Why do you get one? Well, normally what happens is it shows us what your heart is doing at the time that you're exerting yourself. And what we do is we monitor the uh, EKG uh, and the uh, different uh, leads that show us if there's any ischemia, which is uh, where you have a point where the blood and the oxygen is not getting to the heart where it needs it. And, and what, the electrocardiogram becomes abnormal if you're exercising, the heart needs more blood and oxygen, and if it's not getting it, right. the EKG goes bad. The EKG goes bad, and then a lot of the stress tests today we do is called the cardiolite, where you inject a nuclear substance right after exercise, and then you take pictures of the heart right after and an hour later, and it shows us if there's a blockage or not. It gets pretty fancy, doesn't it? Yeah, that's why the cardiologists do it. Men concerned about prostate cancer, is there, how do you, how do you know if somebody's got prostate cancer? Well, I always tell my patients, Bob, that it's twofold. You have to have a digital exam. That's a must. You can't just get away with doing Nobody a likes that. Nobody wants one, but yeah. it's so, so important. That's very important. What does a cancer of the prostate feel like on a digital rectal exam? Normally, you will feel a hard nodular area that's sticking out from the prostate that you normally wouldn't feel. And if you don't feel that, if it feels normal, just, what do you do? Ah, but that's where the PSA comes in. Oh, uh, well, what's a PSA? A PSA is a blood test called, and it's a prostate-specific antigen, and it measures a certain level of 
enzyme that's released by the prostate. And there's a correlation between prostate cancer and PSA. So if it's too high, you've got cancer of the prostate? You may have cancer. Okay. And that's where you have to do inv more investigations. And okay. usually it requires a, a biopsy. So if somebody just had an enlarged prostate, the PSA could be elevated. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to get them six months later. And if it's, if it's rising all the time, then you better suspect. Right, you're looking at the trend of the PSA and the level of the PSA. Um, cancer of the colon. Uh, how, how common, how do you prevent that? When do you tell your patients to get colonoscopy? Well, the most important thing is, is to make sure you do your screening colonoscopy. And uh, a lot of people don't want to do it. They put it off. They're scared of it. But the age of 50 is your cutoff point. That's where most people want to do your colonoscopy is 50. And it's screening. What are you looking for to prevent colon cancer? Right. And what you're looking for is things like polyps and what type of polyp do you have and where is it located, what's the size of it. And then normally they will biopsy them and taking them out. Now, uh, let's talk about, you said diabetes is a big problem. Very big. Uh, why, does it be so, why does it appear to be such a big problem? At it? Well, there's yeah. just a, a big crisis in obesity in the United States and it's the major cause of diabetes is obesity. So if we get too overweight, our chances are pretty good of getting diabetes. Significantly. And how do you make the diagnosis of diabetes? Do you make it by saying, how heavy are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but uh, you need to do a fasting blood sugar. And usually 126 or higher is the diagnosis. A lot of studies now are showing actually 100 or higher uh, could be uh, diabetes. And we have uh, between 100 and 125, it's a pre-diabetic state. One of the 126 is diabetes. And if somebody's in a pre-diabetic state, between 100 and 125, they don't have the 120, now that's fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, if they've got a level of 108, well, what do you tell them to do? Well, the most important thing is lose weight, eat right, decrease your carbs and your fats and exercise. It's very yeah. important. And have laughter in your life. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> make you live longer. Uh, uh, how do you get people to lose weight in our society? It seems like everybody gains weight. Well, the problem is I think people don't account for the amount of calories that they're taking in. And um, everybody always says, oh, I don't eat anything. But I always tell them it's like a jelly bean in a jar. You don't know how, what you're eating or how many are in there until you count them. And yeah. you got to count the calories and you got to eat less calories than what you burn and that will make you lose weight. Uh, my son and I, my son's a physician, are going to write a book, How to Lose Weight. Uh, eat less and exercise more. Yeah, that's easy. And, <laughs> so that's the easy way of doing it. So if you lose weight, can your diabetes go away? Absolutely. I've seen it happen. And if you don't lose weight and your diabetes stays, what problems do you get? Oh, you just heart disease is a major problem, stroke, diabetic neuropathy, uh, kidney failure, wow. uh, loss wow. of eyesight. So it's a huge, huge problem. Very big. So blood sugar, 120, 126. So everybody should get their blood sugar done every five years? Well, it depends on your risk factors, your weight. I usually do it yearly on my patients that sure. are high risk. Sure. Uh, and uh, you tell them if they're overweight and they're, and they're pre-diabetic to start losing weight. Let's talk about immunizations. Okay. What's important in adult and men? Uh, men, adults, uh, your pneumovax, which is for the most common form of pneumonia, your influenza vaccine every year, that's very important. Uh, flu is a major cause of, of uh, death in the elderly. Uh, make sure you have your tetanus updated. Most people don't get that done. And then, uh, of course, the Zostavax, which is the new shingles vaccine, has come out, and that's indicated for patients over 65. So there's four big ones. The, the pneumovax, uh, uh, we went over that fast. Is that what age do you start that? And does it keep you from getting pneumonia? Uh, it keeps you from getting the most common pneumonia, reduces your risk, but not all of them. And uh, usually it depends on your risk if you're a smoker, if you have COPD, but I usually start at around 40, 45. And then, you know, by the time you get into mid 50s or 60, you definitely need a Nomavax. High blood pressure. I've heard that anybody after, if, if they live past the age of 65, they're going to have hypertension. Absolutely. Is it important if somebody's 70 and they have high blood pressure? Absolutely. What is a high blood pressure? Uh, hypertension is usually blood pressure greater than 135 over 85. Um, Do you know your blood pressure? Absolutely. Um, how often, if somebody has a blood pressure of 142, do you start treating them or do you tell them to take their blood pressure at home or you bring them back? If they have minimal risk factors, I usually have them exercise, lose weight, monitor their blood pressure at home. It's very important that they see what their blood pressure is like at home. And then I follow them very closely because I treat them very aggressively. Uh, if somebody has newly diagnosed high blood pressure and you're treating aggressively, 
what medicine do you usually start off with? Is there a special family? There's about five yeah, families. Yeah, I, I think the ACE inhibitors and the uh, angiotensin receptor blockers are probably your, your best bet. Very yeah. safe, very low side effect profile, excellent data on the reduction of heart disease and stroke. And if that doesn't seem to help, do you raise the amount of the ACE inhibitor or do you add a second? You always try to maximize your first drug and then add a second one. But yeah. you have to treat it very aggressively. The average American is on four different blood pressure medicines to keep it controlled. Wow, is that right? Yeah. And so do you rely on their blood pressures that they take at home or do you rely on your blood pressures in the office? They're both very important because people get nervous, they come into the office, they're anxious about it. So they're both very important. Now, if somebody says, comes to your office and they have an elevated blood pressure and you say, your blood pressure is elevated, I want you to start taking it home or come back and get it checked, and they just uh, uh, don't pay attention to it, what are the problems that they could, that could lead to if well, they don't pay attention? It's the leading cause of stroke. It can cause renal failure. It can cause uh, heart disease, heart the arteries. So we've really got a lot of health issues that we've talked about oh, that are very, very important. And, Hypertension would be one. Let's talk about sleep problems. How about if somebody uh, uh, has sleep apnea? You know, they stop breathing. How do you how do you find that out? Talk to them. Their spouse. Their spouse. <laughs> they, they come in saying he's snoring. He won't let me sleep. Or we sit in the couch and when he's not there for five minutes and he's falling asleep and won't talk to me. And those are kind of clues that you get that they may have sleep apnea and their body habitus if they're overweight if. Back to overweight yeah, again, so absolutely. he need, needs to lose weight. Sometimes snoring will go away if people lose weight. Oh, absolutely, sure. And the, the dangers of having snoring with sleep apnea would be? Well, you can develop what's called pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure, high pressure in your lungs. Uh, people can have accidents, they fall asleep driving. That's a major issue. Uh, can uh, lead to uh, apneic episodes where you stop breathing at night. And yeah, heart attacks, arrhythmias, absolutely. problems like that. So it's a, it's a huge, huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, do people have trouble getting to sleep? What do you tell them if, I just can't get sleep, doc? That's a major issue. That's one of the major things that I see. But uh, most people have poor sleep hygiene. They just sleep at irregular hours. They drink caffeine before they go to bed. And, things like that, that just uh, can be a major effect. Yeah, so you have to take a careful history about what's going on at bedtime. Absolutely. Why, do, why are you having trouble? Right. Tony Ramos, time's up. The time really? has just flown <laughs> by. You are a great teacher. I hope you'll come back and we can talk about some I'll specific be happy to. You're a great teacher and I've thoroughly enjoyed learning well, from what you've Thank told. you for having me on. It was a pleasure. It's my